to start our trip. Yeah. All of our junk in the back. Swing so driving. It, so it begins. Still in the boat, on our way. But we're leaving. Goodbye, steamboat. Continue our uh, adventure later. We'll have stay at Blake's friend's house and then uh, on the airplane tomorrow morning to Alaska and then uh, we're going to start killing things. Maybe even kill something on the way there. Just, you know, just for the fun, just get the habit of it. Our trip to Alaska to hunt moose was no ordinary trip. It was a dream of Blake's to get a chance to visit Alaska and hunt for moose. The hunting party consisted of two of my younger brothers, my dad and Uncle Jimmy. We spent a day in Anchorage buying last minute items and our licenses. The following day, we made a long 10 hour drive from the coast of Alaska to the interior to start our float trip. We arrived at our destination with plenty of time to get an early start on the hunt. The group agreed to pack the boats and head down river to find a place to set up camp and begin the hunt. Nothing but Mother Nature from here, Blake. Boat number one. Blake, Uncle Jimmy, and I were from out of state and had to wait a day for our season to begin. While eating breakfast, Blake was scanning the hillside and spotted the first bull moose of the hunt. My dad and two brothers went after the bull as Blake and I collected firewood and dinner. Being an avid fisherman in Colorado, Blake was excited to catch Alaska grayling for dinner. Fishing out here. Just hanging out. <laughs> Directly behind us is where I spotted our first bull moose, bull moose this afternoon. We sent the A-team in. No gunfire yet, but I figured we'd uh, have dinner for him when they got back. There's a wolf chasing a moose right there. There's the wolf behind it. There it goes. The following day, everyone was allowed to hunt. My brother Nathan and I set up on one end of the hillside as Blake and my brother Jonah set up on the other. The only moose we saw for the day was being chased by a wolf. About an hour later, Jonah shot the wolf Nathan and I had seen. Well, Blake, how's, how's the wolf doing? <laughs> Blake, My brother thinks it's disgusting. He's the only one to eat it. <laughs> The following day, we spotted a bull on the hillside and set after it. After an hour of hiking, we reached the area where we had last seen the bull. We spent the rest of the day calling, but no response, and no moose. The next day, we picked up camp and headed downriver to the honey hole. We had to slip into a small, narrow branch of the river filled with downed trees and logs. We set up camp, and the following day, we split into four groups to conquer the valley. After a few hours of calling for a bull, my brother Jonas and Uncle Jimmy spotted a bull on the hillside headed their way. Blake and I hurried to the base of the tree line to get a clear shot on the bull, just in case he decided to head our direction. Once we got to the tree line, we spotted a nice bull moose approximately 200 yards from us. Unfortunately, due to the terrain and shrubs, Blake did not have a clear shot. The opportunity for Blake to shoot was soon to open as the bull was headed for a clearing. With pressure on the trigger and moments away from shooting his first bull moose, a shot rang out and it was obvious the moose was hit. A moment of disappointment hit Blake but was quickly taken away by the thought of eating tenderloin for dinner. Blake and I hiked over a small ridge and I was ecstatic to see my Uncle Jimmy standing over a dead bull moose. His first bull moose he has ever shot. 
He has been coming to Alaska for six years, and he had finally gotten one. While preparing to skin my uncle's moose, my brother Nathan radioed us and said he'd be staying put because he had a bull in his area. No more than 30 minutes had passed before we heard gunshots coming from his direction. My brother quickly radioed us and said that he had another bull down. The following morning, we spotted a small bull and a cow standing in the same spot my Uncle Jimmy and my brother had been sitting the day before. Unfortunately, the only way to get to them was to cross this open field. They start to head back up the hillside, but due to the trees and brush, Blake did not have a clean shot. The following day, we made it out to the hunting spot. However, we spent all day sitting in the sun and not seeing a single moose. As we hiked back to camp that night, I was beginning to doubt that we would ever get another bull moose. We only had one more day in the field before making our two-day float downriver to the landing strip. I began to wonder if Blake was going to fulfill his dream of shooting an Alaska bull moose. The next morning, as I was dreaming of a bull moose, I awoke and realized the moose of my dreams was real, and a bull was grunting close to camp. As we were thrown on our clothes to go get the bull, several shots rang out. That's when everybody realized that Blake was no longer in camp. <laughs> Good job. You hit got back up. Is he a monster? Yeah. I turned around to see if you guys were coming, and I turned back around and he's standing there, and I'm like, is that the same one? Like, it's gotta be the same so one. So that was you first shooting? Oh, yeah. Oh, let's get up there. Hold on. It's really wet. It's really, really <laughs> okay, wet. Okay, we'll go up on him. Later on, Blake explained how he ended up in the swamp wearing sneakers and shooting the bull. Blake said he was so cold that he could not sleep and decided to get out of bed to start a fire for everyone. Blake stated he heard the bull grunting and knew it was his only opportunity to fulfill a lifelong dream. Due to Blake running to the field with only his rifle and using all three of his bullets trying to kill the bull from over 300 yards, he had to borrow a rifle to finish the job. Well, I heard you shot twice. I got and, then I heard, in there. and then I heard two more shots. I was like, how many fucking bullets No, I hit have? him with both the first shots. I hit him and rocked him. Yeah. You should have seen Nathan. Nathan was ready to start firing. There might be two up here, so. <laughs> Shh, man, be quiet. Where did you drop it? Where did you drop it? I can't remember. See, I'm always moving. Dude, I hit him three. Shoot him again right in the eye. You're missing. No, you, I'm not. You got, Did you see the puck coming out? You got him in the nose. <laughs> He's going. He's going down. He's going there. There he goes. He's Damn. dead now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right on his back. Dude, I hit him like four times. Dude, he was not. He's just used all my ammo, man. He's all mine, too. He still don't want to die. He still want to die, too. He's dead now, but his legs are stiff. Oh, my God. He stinks like the sun. Uh, I would imagine he's dead if his eyes are Go ahead and give him a good poke right in the eye, though. Alright. Oh, 
did like full weight into that. Roll him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he surpassed him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After a short pack to camp, and with all three bulls lined up, Blake made it official by placing his tag on the antlers. We had the last bull back to camp before noon, and we decided we might as well start our trip downriver to the landing strip where we would be pulled out by bush plane. We broke down camp, packed the boats, and set off down river. Yeah, it's gonna be out when you go. Oh, close. Huh? Out. Inside out? Oh, okay. Congratulations. Oh, it slides Blake. that way. Inside. There you go. Oh, I don't fit. Yeah. <laughs> In there? Oh, there we there go. Are, oh, there snap. snap. Official. Official. Moves. 2016. September 11th. Look at that, boy. It's respectable for your first miss. River. In okay fashion. Got our antlers tied up, still a possibility of me getting one on our float down. Um, so we got Nathan's baby, Uncle Jimmy's, and then the one that Blake got early this morning. I guess they're on there. My dad's boat has holds more weight, so everything looks kind of in shambles and thrown on there, which, well, in reality, it kind of is. Um, so. We began our two-day float downriver as the rain rolled in and the daytime temperature dropped into the 30s. Due to sitting on the boat for an extended period of time, everyone got extremely cold and miserable. We finally made it to the landing strip and shared the gravel bar with two other hunting parties while waiting for our plane to arrive. took four trips to gather the woods and back to our trucks. After packing up the trucks, we made the long 10-hour drive back home and got in late. The following morning, Blake and I packed our bags and started cutting up our share of the moose meat before flying back home to Colorado. Blake spent a good amount of time getting his trophy ready for the flight home. We did our best to follow the vague directions for flying with antlers, which must have worked because they let us on the plane and were nice enough not to charge us for our bags. The hunt was a dream come true for Blake and he is already in the process of trying to figure out how to make a second trip back to Alaska. Quarters are left. You always got to have the kids helping. Are you helping me? Cutting that moose meat? Are you making roast or hamburger? I'm not roasting a hamburger. I'm making moose meat. You're making moose meat? Okay. 